It's a really interesting process to look at an artist who has been overlooked or unheralded and, and examine why that is the case when during his lifetime he actually produced a significant body of work and one that was actually um, embraced and, and included in collections. Um, he was also um, obviously included in the Macquarie University Art Collection, uh, which is how I came to be involved um, with this, this university, how I came to uh, develop this partnership um, with Rhonda and her team at Macquarie. So Arthur, going back a bit, um, was educated at the National Art School and the Alexander Mackey Teachers College in the early 60s. And he was taught by people like David Strong, and he was particularly influenced by David Strong. And so after he left art school, he, um, he taught for a number of years in, in Sydney high schools. And then in 1975, he um, quit teaching full time because he was awarded a residency for Cité in Paris, where he spent a year. And it was here where he actually really did have a bit of a watershed moment in the mid 70s, where he produced a lot of very significant work and a lot of collages, which were easy to transport because he was working on a much smaller scale than he usually did. And he sent them back to Sydney for exhibition at Holdsworth Galleries in um, 1976. And so what happened with that exhibition at Holdsworth Galleries in 76 um, was that Arthur actually was pretty much announced to the Sydney art scene in Sydney. The works that he showed were called Survival and Decay series. And uh, many of those works are are exhibited here today. And those works were really quite confronting and shocking at the time because um, the, the works were collages that juxtaposed medical textbook images of um, people suffering serious diseases and um, venereal diseases and the effects of those diseases alongside um, erotic and pornographic um, images. And so he was, he was interested in the human condition and he was interested in sex and death and all of those kind of um, big picture issues that animate our existence. And so those collages were seen to be fairly dark and disturbing at that time, and also to be tapping into themes that um, artists hadn't been exploring before in Australia. Interestingly, it was 1976, which, um, you know, five or so years before the AIDS crisis erupted in Australia, or globally, I should say. And so when that did erupt, Arthur McIntyre was very interested in how his early works in the 70s kind of preempted the AIDS crisis and it, you know, preempted that, um, that panic and that hysteria that was associated with sexuality in the 80s and beyond. So later on in the 80s and 90s, he actually started examining um, sexuality in the context of the age of AIDS. So his work was starting to address it. Um, address it um, directly. And so we have here um, exhibited amongst these early collages, much later collages which actually speak to the AIDS crisis. This body of work behind me actually was produced in 1987 for a very important exhibition called The Riddle of the Tombs at Holdsworth um, Contemporary Galleries in Wallara. And this work um, is actually referencing the discovery in South Australia in the 80s of um, of a grave that had been excavated and inside that grave were um, two embracing skeletons. And so the, the, it was unknown how they came to be buried together and why they were um, embracing, but there was the implication that they had been buried alive and that they had um, died together holding, you know, embracing each other. And so for Arthur this was a really powerful metaphor for, um, for the way that um, for countering a lot of the panic, hysteria, and um, bigotry associated with um, people's reactions to AIDS. He was more interested in a compassionate approach, but also in one that's still very, very dark. And so he's referencing, you know, the mass plagues, um, you know, all the, all the skull imagery is also very cubist and referencing Picasso's skulls, which were a direct um, response to um, World War II. So, um, so I, I think it's a, a, and I've tried to also install the work in the same way that Arthur installed the work at Holdsworth Galleries in the 80s. So I, this is a particularly important work that really anchors the exhibition here at Macquarie University Art Gallery. 
And um, on one side of the gallery, you've got um, all the key collages throughout Arthur's, um, throughout Arthur's career as an artist. Starting with the Survival and Decay um, collages that I um, discussed a moment ago. Um, right through to, uh, to the AIDS collages. But in between, he was also interested in examining pop culture. Um, like artists Richard Larder or Mike Brown, he was very interested in popular culture icons like Marilyn Monroe. And in the Fallacies series from 1981 to 1982, he, was, um, he used magazine portraits of Marilyn Monroe and, and um, collage them alongside Edwin Mybridge's 19th century um, time and motion studies, and, and then all this other really interesting flotsam and jetsam uh, that he would get his hands on. Any kind of material would be useful collage material for McIntyre, and he would, um, you know, use really kind of divergent um, collage elements in his uh, works on paper. Included is a work called Art and Man, which is um, from the mid 80s, and that work actually tears out from the newspaper a lot of. Um, um, references to the Sydney art scene at the time. If you look quite carefully at it, there are references to the painter David Larwell. And so that work is interesting in the way that it actually it takes a bit of decoding. It takes a lot of um, peeling back the layers of all the um, patterning and paintwork that, um, that McIntyre applies onto the paper to actually get a sense of what is um, underneath. So all of the newspaper print and that you can actually read if you, if you study the work closely um, reveals um, various narratives um, and you know, various ideas and, and commentary from the time. In contrast to the collages, um, we've got another preoccupation of Arthur McIntyre's running throughout this exhibition of the quarry, and that is his fascination with the human head. This whole side of the gallery here um, comprise a selection of his head studies right through from the early 80s where he was um, using kind of a, a gestural painting which is something he was very inspired by. He was inspired by um, artists like Pollock and abstract expressionists. And what he achieves in those um, paintings of these heads is a sense of anguish and pain through a very expressive um, uh, articulation of, of, um, of emotion in those works. He was very inspired by Jungian's um, psychology and um, he talks about these works in relation to, to Jung as well. So there's another interesting connection that, that, um, that we might consider when we look at those works. There are also um, several of his sketchbooks located in a display case here. And you, you see within those sketchbooks um, how McIntyre was incredibly obsessive um, as an illustrator, and he would, he would, um, you know, he would just work all these different variations of a single theme obsessively throughout an entire sketchbook. So you'll notice that um, that the that the works um, up this end of the gallery are quite monochromatic. Um, that he's primarily um, using, you know, oil stick and that there's a very kind of black and white quality to all of the works. Up the other end of the gallery we've got some works called Solarium and Spring Pain, which um, I've placed at the opposite end of the gallery to suggest the kind of, um, that very strong dichotomy between the monochromatic works that he produced and very, um, very colourful and very bright and and beautiful works that he produced in the late 80s and early 90s.